Hello, Facebook family. Welcome to another episode of Marriage Mondays with Nick and Trina Preston, also the lady the coach. Just want to thank y'all, as we do every week, for continuing to come and join us on these Monday nights to give us uh, roughly 30 minutes of your time to, to impart into your relationship. And hopefully, uh, the information that we give you will help you develop a stronger relationship with your with your spouse. So we just want to thank y'all for coming in and and just just want to uh, we can't thank you enough for for just joining us every week. So we we just want to thank you. All right, we're gonna take the time to share this broadcast with with several people that we have in certain groups. Um, yeah. So with that said, my wife normally um, oh go through. Uh, know, what do you want me to do? You know, you normally say stuff about who we coming part to and okay. you know in the name of you know okay. all that mm-hmm. all right all right so we represent crown kingdom cultural center um where our pastor is finance bush jr bishop finance bush jr and lady denise bush um and so we are here um on assignment to give you resources and encouragement uh, for your marriage relationship uh, we believe in we believe marriage takes work and marriage takes skills and so we're here to help you to develop those skills and to hopefully increase your awareness of areas in your relationship that you can use to make your relationship stronger. I do want to emphasize that honestly Marriage Monday is not just for married couples. It's for those people who are thinking about marriage in their future even if you don't have anybody in mind to fill that space. Um, this There's still lessons that you can gain information you can gain in preparation for when you get to that point so um and i believe it would make you a stronger partner once you come into the relationship having learned some marriage skills so we definitely want you to take advantage if you're um thinking that you may want to be married someday uh even if not soon or if you just want to be able to have better um love relationships the information that we're putting out should be helpful to you uh, under those circumstances as well so we see some people starting to come in and some folks starting to share um let's see we've got charles brown josephine green francine brown uh thank y'all for joining in i think i saw a notification that sheena has shared um so we appreciate all of you guys for coming in uh spreading the word helping others uh, sometimes you never know how much um people in a marriage really are suffering a lot of times they'll suffer in silence and um i guess because of um pride or just wanting to be private not wanting to be messy um but very often people won't talk about the difficulty that they're having within their marriage <clears throat> and um we're not necessarily saying you should broadcast it i certainly don't believe that um But there has to be somebody in your life that you can um, lean on to help you through the ups and downs of marriage. Because you will run into some problems. You will run into some conflict uh, in marriage. And if you don't understand that you will, that's a problem in and of itself. If you're thinking something is wrong because you're running into uh, conflict or because you're not in agreement... That's not necessarily that um, something is wrong with your marriage. That's part of the natural course of marriage. And just knowing that alone makes a big difference. That everything is not smooth sailing 100% of the time. You don't always feel, you know, in year 10 the way you felt in year 1. What love looks like at year 10 may be different from what love looked like at year 1. So just knowing those things and having someone to uh, pour into your relationship to help you gr- grow, mm-hmm. that's, that's priceless. And that's something couples really should seek out um, is to have someone to kind of mentor you or someone to um, some source of information um, where you can learn. You can get some merit skills. Right. And that's the, what we do. Yeah. We try to give you all these these marriage skills that we have had to learn. learn. Yeah. Yeah. And really the topic tonight, uh, fighting fair, we we really had to learn to 
learn how to fight fair with each other, learn how to argue, learn how to disagree. Um, just the, the process of going through, you know, it can almost destroy marriage if you don't learn how to do this part right. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's inevitable that you will have uh, conflicts in your marriage. Mm -hmm. You will have, by, by the sheer nature of who you are uh, as a person and trying to build this life, and there's oneness with this person, other person in your life that you brought so close to you, you will have some conflicts. So it's really important that we learn how to to use rules of engagement of in fighting fair. And when if, when you learn how to fight fair, there's normally resolve at the end. Conflict resolution is what you're ultimately trying to get to. So you want to go ahead and start tonight and going through. I can't. I think we're about five minutes after. Okay. All right. Um, so actually, um, and I'll say this just kind of to preface a little bit, um, even though you already have, it's really important that during times that you're not in conflict, that you use those times of, of peace, if you will, to decide how you will handle conflict. When you're in a conflict or in a fight, that's not the time to start making up rules. So if you all have rules for fighting fair, or conflict resolution established, some rules and procedures established, um, that makes everything easier, helps you get through the fight, and then you're better for having gone through it. Because mm -hmm. uh, the conflict will come. It doesn't have to be a fight. I know fight sounds hard. Some people don't like to see it that way as a fight. Um, but, you know. It is what it is now. Yeah. It is what it is. So, um... Yeah. So anyway, I just want to say that go ahead and establish during times of peace how you're going to handle conflict. Um, one thing that we did was we scheduled um, because we we were not good at fighting fair, and we were not good at fighting to the, get it to a point of resolution. It was just ongoing fighting, like competition. See who can. I wasn't competing. I was competing, y'all. I wasn't competing. I was. I'm going to be heard. And I won't have the last say so when we were in conflict like that. Because if I got to the point of, of arguing, because we've discussed, I don't like to argue. But if I'm going to argue, I want to win the argument. So what you're saying is you were more interested in winning than in resolving. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting to know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, everybody want to be heard. I want to be heard, too. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wasn't interested in continuing to argue and fight, but I was not going to go without a resolution. And that was development for m just just me. Like, you don't have to win an argument. There's no win there. It's all about getting mm -hmm. an understanding. And yeah. then building a relationship on that understanding. Mm -hmm. So that was developmental for me. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that was your perspective. Oh. Um. All right, so the first thing we want to um, start with is, um, as always in marriage, you got to start with yourself. <laughs> so before you go to speak to your partner about whatever conflict it is, whatever happened that you perceive to be a conflict, first thing you got to do is ask yourself, you know, what about that situation was upsetting to you? Why are you upset about what happened? Because sometimes what you bring to the conversation is the details of what happened but that's not really what the problem is it may be some an underlying emotion you know the fact that you felt that you weren't heard right or the fact that um you felt maybe your spouse prioritized someone or something above you mm -hmm. um and so you really got to get with yourself first and try to figure out okay but why am i mad about it i know i'm mad because of the choice he made but why am i mad about it and try to be honest with yourself because then that will make the conversation that you bring to your spouse a lot more productive. So that's uh, one of the rules. Honestly, y'all, there are a lot of rules for fighting fair. And if you Google it, you'll find lots of options. But as with everything, customize it to suit your home. Sit down with your spouse and decide what the rules will be. Make it plain. Make it clear. Write it. Write out what those rules are going to be for you guys so that everybody is held accountable each of you is held accountable to those rules that you've agreed upon. So these are just some rules. In all honesty, you can have more. But uh, we do encourage you to schedule a time. Um, we had a regular time every week 
that we could concentrate and I we set aside an hour I think it was Thursday night so like 8 or 9 something right. like that after every, all the kids were down and we could just focus on um, the conflict and so we would keep notes during the week or write things down and just kind of keep going about our daily business and just kind of put a pen in it and bring that written those notes or those um, grievances already written out which helps you to articulate what you want to say when you have to take some time to write it out and you got to sit with it for a little bit pray with it pray on it it's amazing how you come to the table um with insight right so that's the first thing this is um start off asking yourself why are you upset um and what is it um that you want to communicate to your spouse right and even though you come to the table which is the next point with a list of things stay on one topic at a time yeah get that topic out and discuss it as much as you possibly can um what the guideline it to a resolution yeah, discuss it to a resolution mm -hmm. but the guideline is one of the guidelines we've used is only 20 minutes on a topic because you don't want to use a whole bunch of time on one topic and all you're doing is is just going back and forth and you're basically saying the same thing and, and you feel like you're not being heard. Sometimes it's just a good idea to table it until the next time. Keep that on your list of things to discuss mm -hmm. until there's some resolution to it. Uh, yeah. Some, um, no, yeah, some resolution to it. But as you're discussing, stay on one topic at a time. Get that settled as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. and try to get to a settlement and an agreement on that issue. Okay? Mm-hmm. Um, another rule that's very important is to um, have, I'm going to put these two together, no yelling and no degrading language. Mm. So that takes a level of maturity and self-control um, to know that you, got, you have to follow the rules. And one of the rules is not to yell at your spouse during conflict resolution and not to use any degrading language, which includes um, name calling mm. or... <laughs> Why you take that so personally? Uh, name calling or, um, you know, just putting down, um, what's the right word, belittling. Belittling. Yeah, those types mm -hmm. of behaviors. You have to be careful. Those things are easy to do when you're angry. And so having a set time for your conflict resolution allows you to come to the table without being in the heat of the moment angry. And so you can use that self-control to prevent you from yelling and to prevent you from using degrading language because nothing shuts people down faster than for you to come for them uh, you know at that such a low level you yeah. know with name call it just really shuts people down and and turns the conversation to a direction that it doesn't need to go in that's not going to lead to resolution yeah well not like you said it shuts some folk down and one of those things of being shut down is a person then they then they stonewall the conversation we talked about a little bit about stonewalling last week, I think. And when you stonewall, that means one person is basically done with the situation. They don't want to talk about it anymore. And there is no resolution in not having communication with the other person. So you're saying the rule is no stonewalling? No stonewalling, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just agree that you're going to stay there and deal with it. Right. Nobody's walking out. Nobody's shutting down and giving the silent treatment. Nope. That's the time to talk it out. It's when you're having that conflict resolution. Right. Um, another thing is to take turns talking. So you don't have one person dominating the conversation. You know, listen when your spouse is speaking. Listen to understand. We've talked about that on some of the other uh, broadcasts. It's how important it is to listen with the intent to understand. Not listening for ammunition on how to come back or... <laughs> Just kind of waiting for your turn and you're not even listening. You're just thinking about what you want to say so you can, you know, run that back. Uh, you know, just be ready to, to shoot it out when they finish talking. Actually listen to what your spouse is saying. And then once your spouse is finished talking, then you can, you can speak. You're taking turns. So you should be prepared to listen as much as you're prepared to speak when you come to the table for resolution. Right, and that's where it, that's that can be an easy thing to do or a hard thing to do. If you're belittling that, be belittling that person or, or calling name them calling them names, all they're doing is loading up to, to, to call you something or to, to seek that revenge. They're not looking to, to solve the issue. 
Now, when you use this um, taking turns, you got to be a good listener when you're taking turns because you got to pray about it. Always pray about it before you get into conflict resolution to ask God to let you hear clearly yeah. what's going on tonight or what the other person brings to the tables and give you a heart of, of compromise and understanding. Because if, if you do not and you come with the, the idea of compromise, I mean a uh, competition, um, it's not going to get solved. Like I told y'all before, you know, when we were early in our relationship, when we got into arguments, I'm just, you know, you said this to me, I'm going to say it back to you. That is so immature. You know, that, that, that gets nothing settled. I'd have been better off just not saying anything than to say something just to get back at her. Or not really, because then you... I'm stonewalling. Stonewall. Yeah. You got to learn some skills, because what comes naturally um, in an argument... Because, you know, you can argue with your friends or argue with a co-worker or something... And you not be required to use necessarily the same kind of skills that you you gonna have to use in your mm-hmm. marriage. You might can get away with, you know, unresolved conflict with other people. You might can get away with that, but with your spouse, you have to get to a point of resolution. And so you can't just uh, play it by ear. You no. need to have some skills for how you're gonna deal with it. Because what comes naturally to you is most likely, you know, unless you're just good in that area of, uh, you know, communicating and resolving. But what comes naturally for most people is to defend themselves, Mm -hmm. is to uh, try to win the argument, you know, it's not, or let me match whatever you're doing. Yeah, your energy. Yeah, I'm going to give you back whatever you're giving to me. If you're going to go there, now I'm going to go there with you and do it better. That's what comes natural to a lot of people. But if marriage takes maturity... And if you're going to resolve a conflict between yourself and your spouse, you have to learn some skills uh, for how to manage that and learn a new way of communicating, learn a new way of expressing your thoughts to your spouse, even when your emotions, the emotions are there. Because your spouse is a person that very often you feel the most deepest emotions with and about. And so, you know, just like you can love them deeper than anybody else, you can be angry with them, seem like, <laughs> deeper than with anybody else, too. Yeah, I mean, like that, that statement you just made right there. I don't think there's nobody on the planet that can upset me like this woman can. But there's also nobody on the planet that can make me as happy as she she can. If I allow that to, to nobody's that close to me. I don't allow nobody else to get that close to me. So, you know, she does hold a certain amount of of power in this relationship that I've given to her willingly. But then I also have to understand that she is human and she will make mistakes and she may hurt my feelings. But that's no reason for me to look at her as the enemy. Just that's why we talking about this, learn how to fight fair, resolve any conflicts. And then we can get back together and be like, you know, I've learned to come to the table with you know, this this doesn't make me happy. And I still don't, don't really use the word, you know, what you said hurt me. I've never, you've heard me say that something about, you know, what you said hurt my feelings. I don't think I've ever really said that. Why not? Because I'm mannish. That's and I don't well, use, that's very big I, 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 I don't, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, you hurt my feelings. Something is, is, is not manly it. about that. Yeah, you can. Because I want you to know. And I'm getting to that point. What you said, you know, kind of hurt my feelings. Then now, you let's resolve this. Yeah. So, well, I feel like that. it 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 communicates something different to say you hurt my feelings versus for me to say, well, you know, well, you you idiot or you know what I'm saying? Because That's sometimes true. you lash back out mm-hmm. if you're angry because you are hurt and that's a more kind of primitive and immature way to handle it versus saying. You know, you really hurt my feelings, but that takes that level of vulnerability. It does. That um, is necessary for true communication and for you to grow from that experience. Because I want you to know if you hurt me. Because, I mean, that's not a place I've always been. Because I definitely would, you know, try to tell you down with my words. Mm -hmm. I was very good at it. But the way, instead of just saying you hurt my feelings, but, you know, what you said, you know, it it was not, that was not appropriate to Mm -hmm. say to me. But I don't. I don't say you hurt my feelings, and I think this is the first time we really had this discussion on on air or anywhere. 
But I'm like, you know, that that wasn't necessary now. You might, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that. And so that's just like me saying, that's why you hurt my feelings. But it sounds so, I don't know. I don't think that's communicating the same thing. Though. You don't think so? No, it doesn't communicate the same thing to me. Okay. I mean, if you're telling me that that's how you express that your feelings are hurt, then that's that's something for me to learn from that. But I don't. I wouldn't take from you shouldn't have said that to me. I I don't automatically know that that the reason you're thinking I shouldn't say it is because your feelings are hurt or. If you say that's not appropriate to me, it's almost like you're trying to exert, exert some authority mm-hmm. to say that's not appropriate. And I'm okay. You ain't my dad. How many times have I told you that you are not Nathaniel Anderson? Don't talk to me like you are. Like I'm your that's child. True. Oh no. Yeah. So I think. I mean, it's a learning process, it and is. even just talking about it brings you to a better place um, of understanding, so that as conflict arises. You can reflect back to those uh, conversations you've had to learn about each other, mm-hmm. because the things, the way you express it, might be different from the way I express it versus somebody else. Right. So we have to learn each other and um, have those conversations with a level head, and kind of keep your emotions in check. And that's our disclaimer: what works for us may not work for you. You need to learn your relationship, and you need to do the things that we bring to you. And make it applicable to you. Yeah, customize it. That's right. Fight it, fight it fairly for everybody. Right. Having some kind of rules that's that's going to be necessary for everybody. What that looks like in your household is what is where things vary. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Absolutely, no physical contact when you're trying to. No fight. No, no fair. No, that's that's not so. I mean, where it's abusive contact. Okay, well, we got to clarify that because um, it can, it is beneficial if you are physically touching each other. Well, yeah, let me, like you just said, clarify. You you should not abuse each other physically when you're talking about fighting fair. But go ahead and explain the point to you. Well, we were sharing that uh, what we learned in council, and um, I believe what Bishop has even said of, across the pulpit several mm-hmm. times. Which I feel like is a, a, a good strategy is to, can you demonstrate it with me? Loosen up. Can you turn to the side? Can we, can we do that? Yeah. This is where we're, you're actually sitting. Facing each other. Facing each other. Kind of sort of. Y'all just imagine we're actually facing each other. Yeah, we kind of tight. We look here. tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you're actually holding hands um, while you're talking. I'm put my hands up on here. Or is that a control issue? No, I just I think feel it comfortable. is. Okay. You want one on hand? Okay, we'll do this. Compromise. Relax. <laughs> Stand down. <laughs> but the point is the fact that you're. I don't like that. I don't either. Okay. That's fine. The fact is that you're holding hands. And you can loosen up though, and okay. that you're sitting facing each other so that all your focus is on each other. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you're holding hands keeps you cognizant of the fact that you've got another human being here you know and it kind of uh it allows you to feel that you're holding on to a person right. and it's kind of hard to verbally attack somebody when you're holding hands with them that's right when you actually feel that other person's um energy we said a little bit in the conference that we did uh we talked about maybe five to ten minutes about this if you actually feel that other person's energy you actually feel that that physical contact is hard to just degrade yell at yeah. um say anything out of the way other than let's try to work this out yeah and, and and get some understanding about what we're doing here that's that's all that communicates so it's good to have um some physical contact but not to abuse each other Taurus say you have control issues Right, he would say that. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But anyway. But those those are a few tips. Did we cover everything, or we got more? All right. So yeah, I think that was. Oh, um, if it's yeah, that's a good um. One. Well, we didn't talk about the fact that uh, one of the rules that um, I think most couples would agree to have is that if you're not coming to a compromise or resolution of course of, of the 20 minute no try not to go over 20 minutes on one topic 
um, table it. Put a pen in it. Save it for the next time. Uh, pray about it. W one thing I found, we found, was that when we did that, usually when we came back together, we both had um, a resolution. Right. And either it was two different resolutions that we were, and we were able to talk about those two resolutions to come to a third choice, or to decide one was better than the other. Um, or a lot of times we would have even the same resolution. So you've got to keep God um, in the center of that relationship um, and learn to rely on God and do things God's way so that you can pursue peace right. by following righteousness, mm -hmm. which is God's way of uh, doing and being. So that's, um, that's the point I wanted to point out. It's just table it and pray about it. Come back to revisit it the next time that you have that conflict resolution meeting. And um, God will have shown you. Because, uh, you know, when you have that downtime by yourself, you're a lot more open to hear from God. And I think um, the couple that was on with us, Jasmine and um, the couple from school. Oh, Frank. Yes. Frank and Jasmine. Right. They brought up a very good point that when you're spending that downtime with God alone, that's the place for you to uh, cast your cares and for you to take those concerns about your relationship and learn to hear from God about you and learn to hear from God about how you are to interact with your spouse. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, God going to tell you something about you more so than he's going to tell you about your spouse. Right. And how you behave and once you follow what God has given you, you'll see the response from your spouse. So, Because God knows how to handle them better than you do anyway. All the time. Because mm -hmm, he made time. you. All right. Did we get it? I think we got it. We were kind of all over the place, but I think we got it. And y'all, there's so many, um, especially if you do something like Pinterest, um, if you just go and just put it, type in something like uh, rules for fighting fair, or um, honestly, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll It'll, do you'll it. come up with so many um, already preset rules for fighting fair. And so you don't have to go by any one somebody's preset rules. Get with your spouse and the two of you agree on what rules you're going to follow. And what even if you got to get peace from here and there and there and there and come up with seven rules of your own that doesn't look like what anybody else has, that's perfect. It's It's got to be what works for you, what the two of you can agree upon. Um, just know that the ultimate... Uh, um, goal is to come to a resolution and to pursue peace and that you maintain respect with one another so you're going to look for rules that will lead you lead you there so if you haven't done this with your spouse we encourage you not just to um as the folks in the church used to say not be hearers only but be doers <laughs> doers also so we encourage you not to just hear what we're saying today but to be doers Take some time and, you know, really have this conversation with your spouse. And the two of you sit down and uh, Google it and or even look back at this broadcast and pull out the things that you believe would help you all to have more productive fights. Right. More productive outcomes. Resolu conflict resolution. Because you will have conflict. Mm -hmm. If you think you're going to be married and not have an argument, you are. Your head is in the cloud. And um, you're going to have a disappointment. It's going to happen. Yeah, but you will have. It's just the process of two becoming one. But it's in those um, places like that. When you run into those um, places of conflict, that's your potential for growing closer to your spouse. Mm -hmm. So don't look at it as something negative. Make it something that you get, get ahead of it. Get ahead of it. And that way Satan can't use... Uh, conflict as a div place of division for you in your marriage. You're already ahead of them. You've already pursued peace. And so when conflict comes, you don't have uh, fighting and turmoil. It doesn't lead to division. It'll in fact lead to lead to peace. Right. So, um, Tori said, I discuss, I don't argue. That's great, but sometimes those discussions turn into arguments. And uh, you know, it's it's going to happen. It isn't, and just because people stop talking, doesn't mean that you're not still that you're not still having conflict. 
So I'm telling you, it's not always going to be peachy. It's not. You will have some uh, hard conversations. And honestly, the better you get at resolving conflict peacefully, um, the more the rules become a natural part of you and the way you communicate. And it'll it'll just become a whole lot easier to resolve conflict. Because right. it's to the point now that we can have uh, a conflict that, because both of us are uh, very vocal, very expressive. And something that probably would have shut us down for a few days, we can literally just table it and come back to it and just move on. Right. Not have all that tension and um, contention between us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it was a place we had to grow to. Maybe easier for some. Yeah. Take turns speaking. Don't talk over the other. Very good. Those would be good rules. Very good. So we appreciate the... Um, Comments and the participation. Let me see. I'm trying to see if I overlooked anything. I think we kind of caught him. King of <laughs> King of my castle or King of our castle. I'm just saying. <laughs> he said exactly what he meant. Don't do him like that. I Don't am. do Tori like that. I got the. I got the. I got the people. Okay. But that's my dude, though, y'all. All right. I'm coming. I think that pretty much concludes um, our lesson tonight. So, of course, it's always um, recorded. You can always go back and listen to the recording. We'll post it pretty much as soon as we come off tonight. And um, we appreciate y'all. As usual. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for allowing us these 30 minutes and your, and your early evening on Monday night after being at work all day. And we just want to thank y'all for, for sharing with us. We really do appreciate it. With that said, from the lady and the coach, we love y'all. Good night. Have a good